The words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. of this year, the funeral of His Royal Highness the Prince Philip took place in St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle. To my mind, one of the most Christ-centered funeral services anyone is likely to witness. Prince Philip compiled it himself from the opening sentences to the last words of the second lesson it is a declaration a testimony of his own faith what he believes as his coffin entered the chapel the words from John's gospel were heard I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. This was followed by words from the book of Job. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. The first lesson that Prince Philip chose was from the book of Ecclesiasticus, a description of how great is the Lord, the Creator, beginning with the words, Look upon the rainbow and praise him that made it. Very beautiful it is in the brightness thereof. A little further on is a verse that most must have resonated with his time as a naval officer at sea during the Second World War. They that sail on the sea tell of the danger thereof, and when we hear it with our ears, we marvel thereat. And then came the marvellous second lesson from John's Gospel. John's Gospel, one of the most amazing, marvellous, unique books in the world. We've been studying for the last four Sundays one of the I Am sentences only recorded in John's Gospel. The wonderful sayings of our Lord, I am. Today, instead of the first one, I am the bread of life, we'll be looking at the fifth I am statement. And this lesson that Philip chose is about the fifth. It is the fifth I am. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. 
This he said when he went to the village where his friend Lazarus lay dead and Martha met him. She went out to catch him as he came in and said, if only you had been here, he would not have died. If only you had been here. And so he said those words, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And looking straight at her, he said, do you believe that? I wonder how many of us here would answer that. Do you believe what I have just said? And Martha, looking at him, said, yes, Lord. I believe you are the Messiah the Son of God, who was to come into the world. In the New Testament, Christians are encouraged to be witnesses to their faith, to testify unequivocally what they believe. And to my mind, Prince Philip is letting it be known where he stands. His funeral service is a clarion call from the grave, a voice from the tomb. Prince Philip aligning himself with Martha's expression of total belief. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The whole Gospel of John was written. The main thing and the main theme is believe, believe. John, the blessed disciple of our Lord, whom he loved so much. Is saying time after time throughout the whole of the gospel, the word believe is used 98 times in the gospel of John. Believe, believe. And the whole of his gospel is a wake up call to us all on the importance of believing Jesus. And when Jesus appeared to Thomas, who said he did not believe unless he could see him after his resurrection, when he appeared to Thomas, he rebukes him with the words, stop doubting and believe. Because you have seen me, Thomas, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Do you realize what I've just said? Every one of us here in this church today who believes has been blessed by our Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. Earlier in this gospel of believing, believing, there's a, an amazing verse which came out during the the lockdown, and I was studying Mark, uh, John's Gospel, and this hit me. 
Uh, when Jesus wanted to say something terribly important, he, he, had, he started it by saying, it's in Greek, Amen, 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 Lego Humi. Amen, Amen. Listen to what I'm going to tell you now. If you're not listening before, open your ears now. Or as the Americans would, would say it, listen up. This is vitally important. Whenever Jesus used that expression, Amen, Amen, Lego Humi. Truly, truly, I say to you, listen to this. It's so vital for your life. And the verse starts with, Amen, Amen, Lego Humin. Whoever hears my word, he didn't say voice there, whoever hears my word, whoever can hear it, when you're reading the Bible, when you're really studying and meditating and thinking, whenever you hear the word, the word taking an inner part of you, when it really comes alive to you, whenever you hear my word and believes, and believes him who sent me, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has, present, present tense, has eternal life. Whoever hears and believes has now eternal life and will not be condemned, will not be condemned, will be judged, but not condemned, praise God. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Our journey on earth is a progression. It's a jumping off and we come to either stay with death or choose life. It runs through the Holy Scriptures. This day, said Moses, choose life, not death. And that wonderful verse of assurance from Jesus, whoever hears my word and believes, him who sent me, has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Time doesn't allow, I'm afraid, further examination of that verse. There's so much packed in it. But let you yourselves hear it for yourselves. It's the most wonderful verse of assurance. It reveals our entrance into eternal life starts now, starts today, and continues through our departure in death into the glorious light of resurrection, where we gaze on the beauty of the Lord and serve him forever. Towards the end of his gospel, John tells us why he wrote the Gospel. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. May I end by quoting Jesus' brother Jude, 
who ended his letter by saying, to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God, our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen.